يعطيكم العافيه بدنا نحكي هلا عن محاضره اللي هي ريموفبل اورثودونتيك ابلاينس هلا وي ديسكاست ان ذا لاست ليكشر الاورثودونتيك ماتيريالز ذات وي يوز توداي وي غانا ديسكاست ذا فيرست تايب اوف اورثودونتيك ابلاينسز ويتش از ذا ريموفبل ابلاينس سو ناو ليتس توك اباوت ذا ديفرنت تايبز اوف اورثودونتيك ابلاينسز ذا فيرست وان از ذا ريموفبل اورثودونتيك ابلاينس as the name indicated is the one that the patient can take off and wear and it's as obvious here in the photograph so it's a removable appliance is defined as a base plate usually made of acrylic resin to which are attached various clasp springs etc and we use it to move teeth the second type of orthodontic appliance is appliances is functional appliances which is removable or flux orthodontic appliance which use the force generated by stretching muscles fascia and or periodontum to alter skeletal and dental relationship. So basically the idea of using a functional appliance to try and stimulate the growth of skeletal tissue or restrain the growth of, of skeletal tissue. And we'll discuss this uh, functional appliance in a separate lecture. But this is just to give you a heads up about functional appliance and how does it work. This is one type of the functional appliance called twin block. So basically when the patient closes his teeth, he is forced to move the mandible forward. He can't close unless he is posturing the mandible forward. This posturing of the mandible forward will stretch the lateral thyroid muscle and this will result in producing a growth factors and the condyle resulting in the growth of the mandible. This is all in theory and when you take the lecture of the functional appliance you will all understand about the theories of the functional appliance. The last type of the orthodontic appliances is the fixed orthodontic appliance and I'm sure that one of you or your relative had these braces before and this will be discussed in a separate lecture as well. So we'll talk today about removable orthodontic appliance. So when you have a patient like this who has a reversed over jet and class 3 incisors, you can use a removable orthodontic appliance to treat her and push the upper incisors forward and you achieve a positive overjet. Now, I decided to pick up this case because if you can see that we did not get the full results with the removable appliance because the removable appliance has limitation. They have advantages and they have limitation. And that's why I decided to pick up this case. The main advantage for the removable appliance in this case that we use what we call it the posterior bite plane as you can see on the posterior teeth because we need to jump in the bite because if I procline the upper incisors here they're gonna keep hitting the lower incisors and you will not end up correcting the reverse overjet so you need a separation between the upper and lower teeth and you get this separation by using the posterior bite plane as you can see the capping that is covering the posterior teeth here in this photograph however although that we have this advantage you can see that the result that we got is good but it's not good enough so here where we started with the knee reversed over jet. So what are the components of the removable appliance? It's, it's summarized with the word Arab. So it's A stands for active component, R stands for retentive component, then anchorage, and the last one is base blade. And we're gonna discuss all of these. So start with the active component. So what is active component? Is the component of the removable appliance that is responsible for tooth movement. So in our example here, it's the double cantilever that is touching the upper incisors is the active component because it's the responsible for moving the teeth forward because this is what we want in this case we want to move the upper incisors forward so here the this spring is the one that is responsible for this movement and we call this the active component the active components are classified into four types springs screws bows and elastics so start with the springs so if you can have a look at this photograph, we have what we call it the parietal finger spring, and it's um, used to distalize the molars. And this is an example of the springs. Usually springs have coils with them, and they are fabricated from 0.5 millimeter stainless steel, or in some cases when we use them on the molars, we can use them up to 0.6 millimeter stainless steel. But the most important that they have coil in them, and now we can understand why. If you look at the photograph here in the top with A, the D represents the deflection, the amount of the deflection that uh, we, we um, exert in the tooth structure. Now, when we deflect the arch wire, the small amount here, we get, for example, 100 Newton of force. 
But when we insert the coin, the, as you can see in the bottom photograph, the, um, the three times amount of deflection generated the same amount of force. So basically, increasing, incorporating the coin increased the length of the wire, which resulted in the reduction of the force. And that's why we incorporate coins in these uh, strains. So the force that we use in orthodontics is proportionate to the amount of deflection. So R stands for deflection, which is the bend of the wire that I'm doing here. It's the letter D. And also it's proportionate to the radius of the wire to the power 4, which means if I increase the diameter of or the radius of the wire, the force will increase four times. So if I double the size, the, R, the, the radius of the wire, the amount of the force will increase by 16 times. So that's why I have to be careful when I'm using the diameter. And that's why the diameter of the active component of the stainless steel arch wire is usually 0.5 millimeter stainless steel. While, as you did now in the Adams class in the lab, which is a retentive component, we use a 0.7 millimeter stainless steel because there we need rigidity. We are not exerting any force. While with the active component, because we are exerting force, we need to reduce force. Because in orthodontics, we are aiming for a light continuous force. We are not aiming for a heavy force. However, the force is inversely related to the length to the power 3. So if I double the length of the wire, okay, or increase it by 2 millimeter, by, by 2, the force will reduce by 8 times. And that's what happened here. So if we increase the, as you can see, we incorporated coil, and as a result, the deflection, three times of the deflection, give me the same amount of the force as one time deflection, as you can see in the top. It's all happened because increasing the length of the wire, and that's why we incorporated coil in these springs. So examples of these springs, is one of them is palatal finger spring, and we're going to do this in the lab in which the aim of it is to move the tooth medially or distally within the line of the arch. We have what we call it buccal canine retractor that is moving the canine uh, distally and inward and it's only used with the buccally erupted canines and we're going to discuss this in the lab as well. And we have what we call it Z spring that move the upper incisors and this will be discussed in the lab as well. The second type of the active components is the screws. So this is the screw that is breaking down. So if you can see at the screw, it, one part on the right is embedded inside the acrylic and the other one on the left side is embedded inside the acrylic as well. However, the expansion, the, the hole in the middle is kind of exposed. So the whole idea of the expansion screw that you insert a key to this hole and you turn it. Once you turn it, these two parts move away from each other. When you move, they move away from each other, they kind of move as well the teeth so they can expand the arch. In the transverse, I mean mesiodistally, and anteroposterior dimension. So this is an example of the expansion screw. If you look at this one, this is from a functional appliance, but the whole idea is for the expansion screw. You can see that we split the base plate, and the expansion screw is inside the um, the acrylic. So now, because you split the acrylic and they have ex expansion screw inside it, you have the key. And you, the patient is asked to turn the key twice a week. So you can see this is the key. And once you turn it, the screws will move away from each other. And as a result, the acrylic will move away from each other. And as a result, the arch will expand. In this case, it will expand in the transverse dimension. However, we can rotate the expansion screw and we expand in the anteroposterior dimension. As you can see in the photograph in the bottom, this is an example in which how we can exp use expansion screw so that we rotate it and we cut the acrylic around the incisors and once we open it all the teeth are against the incisors and the incisors will move forward. This is another example to treat crossbite other than the double cantilever that the active component in the top photograph. So instead of that we can use the expansion screw. Now the main advantage of using expansion screw is that the same tooth that you are moving can be used as a retentive component. So what do you mean by this? So look at the top photograph. So a retentive component is a component that is not moving. So if I use a retentive component in the upper incisors in the top photograph, 
and the Z-spring or the double cantilever is pushing the incisors, they're not going to move. While in the lower photograph, uh, you can see that we trim the acrylic around the incisors. And once you open the screw, the whole acrylic will move forward. So even if I use a retentive component in the incisors, everything is going to move. It's like an island that is moving. You take it off from a big island and it's move along. It's the same thing, just that this piece of acrylic is going to move with everything that is carrying. So this is the main advantage of expansion screw over a double cantilever. So then we have bows. Bows is mean that using for anterior teeth. The biggest example is Robert's retractor. It's having two coils and in the same, and they are joined together and it's moved to distalize or to retract the upper incisors. If you we don't use the coils, we use U loop, we call this labial bow. So if you squeeze the two U loops together on the right and left, the wire will move and retract the upper incisors, as we can see here. The last type is elastics. This type is rarely used, but there is certain indication for it. And this is an example for that. If you can look at this photograph, you can see the patient has an impacted canine on the left side. And as you can see in the diagram in the lower arch, the long axis is with purple color, and the canine, where it is impacted, is in uh, gold color. So if we want to, to align this canine, what we need to do is to distalize the canine first, and then bring it down. Because if I bring it down in an oblique direction like this, it's going to hit the root of the lateral incisor. So one way to do it is to use the elastics, the clear color one in this photograph. So we have a hook soldered to the canine, to the Adam's clasp on the sixes, to how the force application is high. And then we retract the canine distally, and we then bring it down uh, just near to the lateral incisor. So this was... That was the active component used in orthodontics. Active components that is used to move the tooth. Now, the second component in the removable orthodontic appliance is the retentive component, which is basically the part of the appliance that uses the vertical displacement of the appliance. So it needs to the appliance needs to be held in its place, and the component that is doing that is called the retentive component. It's passive. It doesn't do any tooth movement, but it just holds the appliance. And in this photograph here, it is represented by the four Adams clasp that has been done on the sixes and on the first three molars. Now, the wire gauge of the retentive component is 0.7 millimeter, simply because we need rigidity in the arch wire. It's the opposite to the active component in which we need a light force. So with the active component, we use 0.5 millimeter stainless steel. While with the retentive component, we use a rigid 0.7 millimeter stainless steel. The most common one of the active component that you can easily find it in most of, or if not all of the orthodontic appliance removable one, is the Adams glass that is engaging the undercut, as we can see in this uh, photograph. Now, the main advantage, one of the advantages, I mean, of the Adams glass, that we can solder a headgear tube to the Adams clasp, as you can see in this photograph, so that we can use a headgear to hold the sixes. Now, this is a very important uh, photograph about about the headgear, the, the, the um, sorry, the Adams clasp. Now, Adams clasp with the arrowhead is engaging the undercut, and by that, you get a retention. Now, if the patient, if the patient, for sure, we're gonna take the appliance off and wear it again at least three times a day. That is a times he's brushing his teeth. So when he's taking off the appliance and they move it back, this is going to happen. The area of the pointer X is going to be straightened, and the arrowhead will be leaving the undercut. And as a result, the appliance will not be retentive. So one way to um, know if the patient is wearing the appliance or not is just to check the retention of the appliance at the follow-up appointment. So if the appliance is not retentive, that is meaning one of two things. Either the patient is not wearing the appliance, or he's not taking it off, which means that he's keeping it in all the time, and he's not brushing his teeth. Either way is wrong. And the patient, so what, what should happen is that in the review visit, the appliance should not be retentive. Now, so when, when the, Adam, the, the arrowhead leave the undercut, you need to activate this one, or adjust the Adam with the Adam's player to bring the arrowhead back again to the undercut. And this is done with the Y, where you see the letter Y is indicated where we hold the, the flyover. 
and we bend the wire, we bend it in so that we bring the um, arrowhead back into engaging the undercut and get retentive again. The second type of the retentive component is the ball end clasp, and this ball end clasp is used in the anterior teeth, mainly the lower anterior teeth. As the name indicated, it's a ball, and at the end of this clasp is the ball that is engaging the embrasure of the lower anterior teeth. The third type is what we call the blend clasp. So as you know, we have the fixed orthodontic appliance. In the fixed orthodontic appliance, we have bands on the sixes. Now sometimes we need to combine fixed orthodontic appliance with a removable appliance. Now in the removable appliance, we need a retentive component. So the retentive component that can be used with the bands is called blend clasp, as you can see here. So that fit above the, above the band and hold the appliance. The third or the fourth option of the retentive component is the Adam the labial bow. Well, if you remember, uh, we discussed labial bow as an active component. So how we discuss it again as a retentive component? Simply because the teeth has an inclination. Now, upper incisors usually they have a 120 degrees to the Frankfurt plane, <coughs> which means that all the time, if you fit the labial bow in the middle third of the crown or above, that means that there is an undercut. So if we do not squeeze, if you don't squeeze the two U loops, this is going to be a passive, and it will be used as an active component. I'm sorry, as a retentive component. But if we squeeze them, that means that this is now be an um, active component that is retroclining the upper incisors. So that is a retentive component. Now we move to the anchorage. Anchorage means resistance or unwanted tooth movement. You will have a separate lecture talking about anchorage, but just for now. And if you look at this photograph, this appliance is trying to distalize the canine. As Newton third law said, for every action there is a reaction. And this reaction is equal um, in the amount and opposite di in direction. So when I try to push the molars, the canines posteriorly or distally, the appliance will move forward. And this movement forward will take from the extraction space by the 5 and the 6 on both sides. Now, if I want this movement, then this is fine. But if I don't want that, I will call resistance for this unwanted tooth movement anchorage. The last thing about the, uh, active, the components of the removal appliance is the basic plate. Basic plate is, the, is made of polymethyl methacrylate called the cure acrylic. And we use cold cure acrylic because we, we don't usually use um, orthodontic appliance for a long time as we do with the heat cure acrylic. So we don't need the high um, physical properties that is provided by heat cure acrylic. So we need the appliance for six months. So cold cure acrylic will do fine uh, with us um, because it's easier, it's cheaper. So we use it instead of the heat cure acrylic. So that base plate is used to join the different components together. Adam's clasp, double cantilever in this case. But sometimes we modify the base plate to help us. One of the modifications is to use a flat anterior bite plane. When you use a flat anterior bite plane, which is as you can see in this photograph, the patient has a deep bite of a bite when he include, include on the bite plane anteriorly. As a result, you will have a posterior separation between the posterior teeth. Posterior teeth tend to over erupt until they meet. Over eruption of the posterior teeth will result in the reduction of the deep overbite to improve it to a normal overbite. So, in cases in which we have deep overbite, we can use a removable appliance with a flat anterior bite plane to reduce the overbite and to improve it. This is not important. Um, the second type or the second modification is to have posterior bite plane. So the idea of using posterior bite plane is to make separation between teeth to allow tooth movement. May, keep in mind that a posterior bite plane will not treat anterior open bite because that all of the students got confused with this because they think if you separate the posterior teeth, the anterior teeth will over erupt as we did with the anterior bite plane. But this is not the case because the upper incisors reach the maximum potential for eruption. So when we use the posterior bite plane, the, the only indication or the only use of that is just to, to separation between teeth, as we do in this case. 
If I want to procline the upper incisors, I can because again, I'd be prevented from proclination by hitting the lower teeth. Mm -hmm. So to fix this, we use a posterior bite blade to separate the upper anteriors from the lower and I can freely move the upper incisors forward. So what is the mode of action of the removable appliance? Removable appliance act by three things. First one is tipping movement. Second one is movement of a block of teeth. Third one is to influence the eruption of the opposing dentition. So how is that? Now I'm sure they're going to take the lecture of physiology of tooth movement, just a quick revision. Now we have something we call it central resistance. Central resistance is the middle of the bar, middle is the middle of the root of the tooth that embedded inside the bone. So the middle of the root of the incisors, as you can see in the pointer here, and it's in the trifurcation of the uh, molars or bifurcation in the case of lower molars so if i apply force to the center of resistance what i get is movement of all the parts of the object in the same direction with the same speed this is what we call it bodily movement so in order to get bodily movement you need to apply the force into the center of resistance by this every part of the of the object will move in the same direction with the same speed but if I apply the force away from the center of resistance, as a result, they will have a rotation. We will get a moment. And the rotation will happen around the center of resistance. So the crown will go in one direction, while the root will go in the opposite direction. So as you can see, the center of resistance is inside the bone. So there is no way that I can apply the force in the center of resistance. And as a result, I will always get a tipping movement with the removable appliance. However, if you apply a couple force, as you can see in the door here, so if I touch the door with my hand only, the door will rotate. But if I touch the door and push it away with my hand and my leg at the same time, it will move as a bodily movement. This hand and foot touching the door is called couple force, which means using two forces. If I use couple force, I can move the tooth bodily. And this is the mechanism of working of the fixed appliance. And this is how fixed appliance can do bodily movement. Why removable appliance? Because we can't apply a couple force, we do only tipping movement. Uh, sorry. The other mode of action is to move a block of teeth of the removable appliance. We said tipping movement number one, number two is moving a block of teeth. As you can see in this photograph in the top, we move the upper incisors all together forward. So this is a block of teeth. And the bottom one as well, we move the upper of the incisors as well um, as one block. And this is what we call it moving a block of teeth. And it influences the eruption of the opposing dentition. It's here as we use a removable appliance and we use anterior vital plane, the molars will over erupt to meet each other. So removable appliance were very popular in the 1940s after the Second World War. World War. And the reason for that, because we did not have bonding mechanics, the mechan materials, uh, there were not many orthodontists there, so removable appliances were very popular. And they were, at the time, they were used to treat most of the uh, orthodontic cases. But as the development of the fixed appliance and the development of the bonding techniques, we more and more shifted to use fixed appliance more than removable appliance. However, we still use removable appliance in certain indications, and we're going to discuss them now. So we're going to talk now about the indication and contraindication for removable appliance, advantages and disadvantages, the use of the removable appliance, and fitting of the URA and the complications. So what are the indications and the contemporary use? The first one is a treating a cross and simple uh, upper central incisor in a cross bite, especially in a patient in the mixed dentition. Now, later on during this semester, you will take a lecture that is called interceptive orthodontics. Interceptive orthodontics means that the treatment that is done early to prevent or to eliminate or reduce the severity of a developing malocclusion. So, basically, this patient is in a mixed dentition and he has a central incisor in a crossbite. And this crossbite is associated with displacement. If we leave this crossbite untreated until the patient is in the permanent dentition, upper incisor will, be, will have attrition. Lower incisor is, will be pushed outside the periodontal ligament because each time the patient is closing, the uh, upper incisor is exerting pressure on the lower incisor, pushing it outside the bone. And there's a kind of evidence, that, although it's a weak evidence, that displacement can cause DMD. So for all these reasons, 
patient can't wait and we have to provide them with um, treatment. One of the best ways to provide the patient with treatment in these cases is to use a removable appliance because you don't need to bond the teeth. The patient is wearing the appliance and take it off so he can brush his teeth as he want. Uh, it's easier not to bond bracket in this age. It's better for the oral hygiene. And as well, don't forget about the crossbite and you need to free the occlusion using a posterior bite plane. So this patient here is fitted with a removable appliance, as we can see with a posterior bite plane and zit spring to move the upper incisors forward and the upper incisors move forward to correct the crossbite. This crossbite correction can be done uh, for one tooth but can be done for multiple teeth as we can see here when we push the upper incisors forward and the crossbite is corrected. However, as we can see that as we said that removable appliance are only able of doing tipping movement. We can do um, bodily movement and as well we can do um, multiple tooth movement. I mean each time we use we do tooth movement we need a separate URA. So we can use one or two active components we can use more than that. So for example here if I want to close this diastema using removable appliance I will do only tipping movement. So I will still have space gingivity because the teeth would be tilted. And as well, I would need more than one removable appliance because I have to move the central incisor first, then the lateral incisor, then to bring the canine down. So that means that I need more than uh, one appliance. And these multiple teeth tooth movement and uh, use, um, bodily movement is an indication for a fixed appliance treatment. And this is what we did for this patient. We sh next step was a removal fixed appliance, and then everything is sorted out for the patient. The second use of removable appliance is treatment of posterior crossbite. So if you look at this patient here, you can see that the midline are coincident. But if you can see at the posterior teeth, the patient is biting cusp to cusp, which is uncomfortable for the patient. And so the patient, to, to, to achieve maximum intercuspation, what they're going to do is to close and to shift the mandible to one side to achieve maximum intercuspation. And if you can see, this is what happened. So the patient closed to the maximum intercuspation by shifting the mandible to the left side. And as a result, we have a midline shift in the lower with the midline shifted to the left. Because simply, the patient has a cusp to cusp occlusion, which is uncomfortable for the patient. Now, if I want to treat this patient, I have to expand the upper arch on the right side and on the left side and make the uh, arch bigger. So we're going to do a removable appliance, and this is one way to do it. And here we design it. So we start with the active component. We're going to use expansion screw in the middle. Then we need a retentive component. And by the way, if you're going to use a retentive component, if you are not using expansion screw, you need a three retentive components. But if you are using expansion screw, you need a four retentive component. So here we fitted a retentive component on the first premolar, on both sides and uh, first molar on both sides as well so that four retentive component for Adams we have the expansion uh, the anchorage here is called the reciprocal anchorage you're gonna cover this in details with um, when you do um, anchorage and the last one is a posterior bite is a bite to have this basic plate which connecting the different components together but don't forget that when we have a cross bite we need to free the occlusion for the teeth to expand so that's why in this case we're going to use a posterior bite plane. Okay. The third use of or the temporary use of removable appliance is distalization. So if you look at this case here, the patient has a canine that is almost half or three quarter unit class two. And as all of you know that when we treat the patient, we are aiming to treat the patient into a class one canine relationship. So what I need to do is to distalize the buccal segment until I create enough space for the canine to go down and be in a class 1. So what I need to do is to push the 6s distally, then after the 5 one erupt to distalize it and the 4 as well. So this is one indication to use a removable appliance. So if you can see here that we distalize the 6s using the penetral finger spring, and you can see the amount of the space that we created around the 5. So now we distalize the 6s, and we reinforce anchorage as a head gear because we want to help us with distalization. And now uh, we use another appliance to distalize the four and the five. And this is what I said about the multiple tooth movement. Each time we need a different component, we need uh, a new appliance. 
So now we fitted another appliance that moved the four and the five distally. And as you can see, the four and the five, they are tipped distally because we are able only to do a tipping movement. As you can see in this photograph now, we created sufficient amount of space distal to the canine. So now we can distalize the canine into a class one. But as you can see, that the four and the five, they are tipped distally because simply we do tipping movement. And now this is the time to use fixed appliance to apply these teeth and finish in a class one canine. And as you can see now, the four and the five, they are uprighted because we can do that with fixed appliance. The fourth or the fifth we use maybe of the removable appliance is to use removable appliance as a retainer. So when you finish orthodontic treatment, the teeth tend to go back to where we started. So we ask the patient to wear the retainer to prevent that from happening. And removable appliance is one type of these retainers. As you can see in the photograph, this is called Holy Retainer. It has a labial bow in the top and other on the incisors and Adam's clasp. Just make sure not to ask the patient to wear the um, Adam's uh, the removable appliance all the time because uh, this is going to result in uh, candidiosis in the upper arch. Um, by this now, we finished the lecture. Uh, this lecture you can study from Laura Mitchell textbook. Uh, there is a whole chapter talking about removable orthodontic appliances. You are asked to cover by yourself the steps of insertion and review and the complication of removable appliance. It's written in details inside the uh, textbook. So please make sure to read it uh, because this is going to be asked in the exam about it. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you in the lecture.